Welcome back, Chaotically Intoler, episode 133, big weekend, massive weekend. Um, I don't even know what to say. I mean, ha- some of them were kind of stinkers, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I think the... Yeah, the second half of the Ravens the game was kind of, of a Ravens stinker. The Ravens game was really the only bad football game, you know what I mean? I mean, yesterday that you had the Lions-Bucks was pretty pretty balanced for a while, and then, of course, the Chiefs and Bills were just, you know... Like whoever had the ball last classic. wins and yeah. uh, played out that way. I just think it was a lot of mismanagement. I guess I feel like there was like some like mistake a playoff team shouldn't make, like missing a field goal by Bass. Well, yes, yes. Uh, funny enough, I had a friend today from Baltimore text me that his mom saw Justin Tucker at the store. Everyone's going up to Justin Tucker, wishing him good luck, and somebody asked him apparently about Tyler Bass, and he said, "Well, you know, it happens." And I'm thinking. Not to him, and I hope not. Um, but I mean, in that case, well, the the fake punt was absurd yeah. and desperate, and you could see it coming because they were they were messing around with the formation. And um, but we'll get into this with that game. the The score was not nearly as. Cl- I mean, the way the Chiefs dominated the game offensively, yeah, almost eight yards of play. Buffalo was doing everything it could to protect its defense, the play calling. They were just over. They were just overmatched. Mm-hmm. They were just undermanned and overmatched in that game. And um, there's been talk about Kyle Shanahan and how he's not aggressive enough in the postseason. Because going back to the Atlanta Super Bowl, you know there were a lot of question marks about his play calling in that game and the way that the you know the Patriots comeback unfolded. And then in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago against the Chiefs. Um, and even on Saturday with Purdy, the feeling was it, it, it was it just I don't know that it wasn't aggressive enough. They weren't explosive enough. So, um, yeah, the coaching is a big part of it and health. Yeah. I mean, my God, like we saw it yesterday in the Bills game, especially you saw it with Debo Samuel. Um, you got to be healthy this time of year. Mm-hmm. This isn't quite like baseball where you can lose a, a key guy or two and you can make trades or you can, you know, the, the other 23 guys on the roster will just pick you up individually. Football, you know, you. You can't go too deep into the depth chart yeah. and expect to win. Well, I mean, we saw the Lions pick up Zach Ertz today. That was like, yeah, that's telling. You said that was a big yeah. And like I was saying before, maybe that's insurance for Laporta. Maybe they think he can make an impact, or maybe just because he played in the NFC West for the Cardinals, he knows he has a couple of tips on how to attack the 49ers. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk Ravens Texans to start. Big win for the Ravens. You had to get that monkey off your back. I feel like yes, just with. Coming out of the bye, you, you had that collapse in, what, 2019, mm-hmm. right? And then, obviously, I think those thoughts kind of creeped in, especially in the first half. I mean, that game yeah. was very close in the first half. Uh, Houston really seemed to not be able to move the ball whatsoever, though, I felt like. The the Ravens' defense is violent. Yeah, the, the, the energy at home, the, you know, the aggressiveness of the Ravens even. So they played Houston twice this year. They held them both times to the team's lowest output of the season. They, they held them out of the end zone, actually, in both games. So the Ravens only gave up the punt return touchdown. You never want to see your special teams have a breakdown in the postseason or any time. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, the Ravens won a game on a punt return against the Rams in December. Yeah, But, um, you know, because we'll talk later about kickers. And <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> for the Packers and the Bills, you know, lamenting late missed field goals um the ravens are in good shape there yeah it was the first half was um you kind of expected that the ravens were gonna it was gonna be a little bit of touch and go you know you had that whole history you had the cold weather you know coming off the ravens hadn't played a meaningful game in three weeks since that 49ers uh, no since excuse me since the miami game on yeah uh, on new year's eve was their last was that new year's eve that was new year's eve wow week 17 of course in my head that's week 17 is the end of the season but uh, but the second half, they came out right away. And this is how you know what a team's really made of in the postseason. When you need to do something, when you have no margin for error, and the Ravens probably felt like they didn't. They had to come out and at least get points in that first possession. They go right down the field. Jackson runs it in. And I think that drive just, everybody let out a sigh of relief. Like, we have a lead now in the second half. Like, let's let's breathe. We got our offense going. And from there... You could just see everything was – they were relieved. The defense started pinning its ears back. and Poor C.J. Stroud, no chance. Uh, and and then the Ravens did what they did. They pounded the rock. They ran the ball. Jackson had 100 himself, which, I, I mean, I don't mind. Like, obviously, who's going to say, yeah, I'm complaining that 
my team's quarterback ran yeah. for 100 yards. But you don't, you know, ideally you could just pound the running game and you could have your yeah. running backs go 25, 30 carries for 150 or whatever it was. But then the, the good news was they got to get, they were able to get Dalvin Cook some touches late in the game, which really worked out well for them. I was a little surprised Jackson was still in there when it was 31 to 10 and then they kicked the late field goal. But they, yeah. they were just handing off at that point. So they got five yards of pop from Justice Hill. Um, Cook had eight carries for 23 yards. Not bad, considering he hasn't played in a, in a little bit. So uh, this is this was the Ravens' identity. Like, this is what they do. They they have to run the ball, I think. I mean, it's not that they, they couldn't win. We've just never seen a game where, like, if Lamar Jackson has to throw, like, 50 times. Yeah. They get into a shootout, shootout with the Chiefs. That would be my concern. You know, not that they couldn't put together one drive when they needed to. Um, but you just worry about that. They're yeah. not, are they the kind of team that can come back from 14 points down? And I say that and the last time these teams met was week two of 2021. It was a big deal because the Ravens had lost all three and the Ravens were down 35, 24 in the fourth, came back, took the lead, got a late fumble recovery of Edwards. Alaire. they won the game. So maybe that, that game right there broke the curse a little bit against the chiefs. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll see though. First, first, uh, AFC road or AFC championship game on the road coming up, but I yeah. think the Ravens have to feel really good and hopefully get back Mark Andrews and maybe Marlon Humphrey. They've been doing just fine without him, but they can get those two guys back. Boy, does that just make them that much more dangerous? Yeah. I'm looking at the yard. Right? I mean, you has dominated just in, in every, almost every single statistic, like yeah. first down 22 to 10. Um, total plays, he dominated in plays, 67 to 47. Total yards, 352 to 213. Right. You guys ran for 129 without Lamar. Like, no right. problem. You had no right. problem running the ball without him. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I would assume that Lamar's ability to run has impacts on it, the running game with the other guys as well. Yeah, of course. But just getting Dalvin Cook touches, um, just adding a, another dynamic. To, to your offense is big. Yeah, because they lost Keaton Mitchell, and he was kind of the Swiss Army knife. He was a really dynamic young first-year player, and um, so they've kind of had to pick up some slack there. And Cook's not quite going to replace that, but he brings some a veteran presence, obviously, and he thinks he's still got a lot in the tank. He's not like he's an old, you know, an old man, old, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so they, yeah, I mean, Justice Hill, Gus Edwards, Dalvin Cook, I think uh, well, they're in good shape. Right, yeah, running wise, and and Houston. I mean, I I don't think you can come away from anything with this game. But the only thing you say is that wow, what a what a run yeah. we had. I yeah. mean, this was you don't ex- you didn't even expect to beat Cleveland. I feel like right, right. They didn't expect to be in the playoffs. They didn't expect to beat the Colts. Like the fact that they were here is a success. This this is the game where they walk away saying, oh, you know, applaud the team off the field. We had a great year. Yeah. Sucks to yeah, lose, we're but really yeah, we're, yeah, we're just one week late. That's it. We're one week off. Um, but yeah, the, congrats to the Ravens. Uh, yeah, their well. first, what is this? The first home AFC title game for them as first well? First ever in the city of Baltimore since the 1970 season, mm-hmm. which is, a, a, I mean, God, it's over half a century ago. Um, that was on the way to Super Bowl five against the Cowboys. <laughs> Uh, but the, which they, they won in a Colts. gross. Yeah, they, they won in a gross that game. That was like, even though it was one basically on a last second field goal, that it was one of the worst Super Bowls yeah. ever. I think there was like five turnovers by yeah. each team. Uh, I want to say, yeah, it was something like that. And I'm trying to think, was it Jim O'Brien? Was that his name? Kicked- um, it's yeah. So the Ravens. This is their fifth AFC Championship game, but first one yeah. at home. Most of them were in New England. Most of them. Two out. Two against the Pats. One against the Raiders. One against the Steelers. So the, the good thing for the Ravens is, even though this group has not really, that they don't have a lot of, yeah, I mean, they have some postseason experience, but not, you know, Super Bowl experience. Deep runs. Kyle Van Noy, who started on the team with nine sacks this year, he comes with two Super Bowl wins. And he was part of one of the best, uh, Bill Belichick's, one of his masterpieces when he beat, I mean, we, he completely shut down the Rams, yeah. um, well, twice ever, but in 2018, when they held him to three points and Van Noy was a big part of that team. And that's just, those are the savvy type of pickups that the Ravens make because the Ravens, this was their first playoff win since the 2014 season. Right. And they beat, they beat uh, Pittsburgh in the wild card wow. around that year. It's been a while. 
But what I was going to say was, you know, and we'll, we'll come back when we preview this game. Um, but the Ravens, like Harbaugh at least, and the organization has experience playing these like uh, uh, Goliaths of the conference. Because like you said, right, they, a lot of those championship games were New England or Pittsburgh. So, the, you know, the Chiefs are kind of the new Patriots, right? Patriots are out of the way. So the Chiefs can be the Patriots. And uh, this is kind of like that type of moment. And the Ravens have always risen to the occasion in those games, even the ones that they lost. They were very close, very valiant. They did it, you know, one year they had a rookie Flacco. Oh, yeah. It was a pick six that basically sealed the game. And then the one in New England with Billy Cundiff and uh, Lee Evans. But, hey, knock on wood, because that ended up the greatest thing was Billy Cundiff misses that field goal. The Ravens pick up Justin Tucker, some undrafted kid the next year. and um it's worked out pretty well. So um, I think the Ravens have to feel as, as good as they possibly could coming out yeah. of this game. I mean, it's well, like, John Harbaugh was dancing all, all dancing. in the, all in the locker room. A lot of Harbaugh dancing in general. Yeah. This, in 2024. Right. And I, and, and I think Jack was in there too. Jack, Jack Harbaugh. There. Yeah. Peyton Manning was at the game Saturday and then somehow he made it to, was it Detroit or Buffalo? I can't remember. I think it was Detroit. Probably Detroit. Cause yeah. he did that thing with Jeff Daniels. Oh, he did, he did the that. seance. They did a seance in like, I don't even know, November, maybe, maybe, oh, or October. Bad, they did, mojo to bed or yeah, whatever. they did a whole video for like, pay, like Omaha Productions or something. Oh, okay. Him and Jeff Daniels, there's a bathtub, they poured something in it. I don't know, some sort of seance and it's worked. I was wondering about Jeff Daniels because he was like the one celebrity I didn't see, but I know he's a big yeah. time Lions fan. And I, by the way, and we'll talk plenty about you know Taylor Swift, but like I... I, for the Lions to have some celebrities attached to that team, yeah. nobody can accuse them of being front runners. You know, they have they're nothing. There's nothing to front run yeah. with that franchise. Like the people that have that are you know the Detroit based celebrities, yeah. you know, Eminem and and look, Jeff Daniels, Tim Allen, Tim Allen, Mike Tirico. I don't know. He's I know he's not allowed to say it. But he's <laughs> from Detroit. He loves that. I, I love that he got to do the game mm -hmm. both games. He's gotten to do both Lions playoff wow. games, which is. Um, He's a Michigan guy. And, uh, you know, those are the people you want to see. Yeah. And you want to see the owners and shots of the, the GM, maybe the people that were instrumental. I don't want to see a player's girlfriend or wife or his brother, for that matter. Or just, I mean, it's fine. I understand. Or they'll show, like, con concerned shots. You know, like CJ Stroud's mom. I thought that was great. Like, yeah. Show her, you know, she's, yeah, I understand. Like, it's a, the mother of a player. It's different. But, like, yeah. the Taylor Swift thing, my God, getting ridiculous she's actually she i don't know she's not at fault at all in my opinion no she she's just wrong. she's just sitting she's there just there and the she's nfl fun, and yeah she should it's the it's the media's uh, uh inability to consume enough of it yeah. yeah she has of course she has every right to be there and to support him what else would she do the jason the jason kelsey thing because he's in the nfl i i understood why they were going all over him like every it felt like every five minutes they were they were cutting to Jason Kelsey doing something crazy. Well, it's nothing like rooting for the team that beat you in the Super Bowl last year, right? He he knows he's retired. I've I've actually heard the theory that he's gonna him and Travis are gonna retire at the same time on their podcast on New Heights. Oh. That's that's the new working theory because Jason has said, I haven't made a decision yet. I can't make a decision. Um, but they said it on the podcast. They said I haven't made a decision, and Travis has already been talking about, hey, um, I might be getting too old. Somebody's retiring on that podcast. Will oh, it just be absolutely. Jason or will it be both of them? But it's yeah. going to come out on New Heights probably before it comes out. Oh, else. absolutely. But um, yeah, no. And again, I mean, like not Jason, of course, you're going to root your, for your brother, even yeah. though they did lose to them in the Super Bowl. I, yeah. I get it. It's just we, we're talking about and we'll get into the Chiefs, but they're the new Patriots, right? We're getting tired of it. And it, it but it's it keeps it fun because you, you have a villain, you have somebody to you want to bring down that Goliath, yeah. right? And the Ravens have that opportunity, and to an extent, the Lions have that opportunity. Because the yeah. Niners, while they haven't actually won the thing, they've been in, what, four out of the last five NFC championships. Yeah. As a franchise, they've won five. So, you know, and here are the Lions in their second championship. And so that, a nice, when we get into that, it's a nice theme mm -hmm. for this championship weekend. Yeah. Um, it's it's just funny to remember, I think, back to 2018, when Brady was still on the Patriots. Yeah. And so we're still Mahomes, Patriots. Mahomes went in, you know, or uh, they welcomed Brady to Arrowhead. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, oh, my God, I hope the Chiefs win. I hope the Chiefs win. 
just the heel turn that has happened uh-huh. where everyone hates Mahomes now. Like well, it's crazy. Auto commercial. I mean, God. and it's like, I get it, but it's, it's just very interesting to see how quickly that, that narrative can change. Like it's almost like that. Right. When don't let me get on too much of a tangent, but my big problem with the, the chiefs as much as anything is okay. If they're going to be the new dynasty, fine. They, the, the torch was never properly passed. Usually when you, when the torch is passed, you have that, that game where you beat them yeah. and you, you say, okay, now it's our time. They didn't beat Brady. Brady went in and beat Mahomes that year. And it's not that Mahomes played a great second half, terrible in the first half, great in the second half. Patriots, they got it in overtime. They never gave it yeah. back. Um, and then the next year, there was a chance that they were going to meet again. But Ryan Tannehill and those scrappy Tennessee Titans and Mike Vrabel went back to New England, <laughs> knocks them off. And instead, the Chiefs are hosting a nine and seven Titans team for yeah. the AFC Championship game instead of maybe, well, m- maybe having to get past the Patriots in the divisional round. And then twenty twenty comes, and it's like they they dominate that season, yeah. the, the pandemic season, and they beat the Bill uh, Browns, and they beat the Bills, and then they go to the Super Bowl, and who do they see? Tom Brady. And here's your chance now. Okay, show show us that you can take that torch. Yeah. And they got torched. They lost twenty by twenty two points in that Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And then they didn't have to see Brady again. They beat him in his last year when the Bucks were kind of a joke last year, yeah. honestly. Um, but by default, by default, the Chiefs have kind of become that yeah. next team without really, I don't say they haven't earned it. Obviously, you get to six AFC championship games, but there was never that, that what, like when Peyton beat Brady, that was the moment where it was like, okay, this is a rivalry now. And you're, oh, and, and you watch yeah. that game many times. And then, and then, oh, guess what? Peyton did it two more times with Denver. Mm-hmm. It's like, so. Oh, well, you know, Brady had seven rings, Peyton had two, but Peyton actually won three out of the five playoff meetings. Yeah. Peyton went to multiple Super Bowls with two teams. You had that, like, passing of the torch moment. You never have had that with the Chiefs. It's mm-hmm. just that the, these other teams in the AFC are just never consistently good enough. Yeah. They weren't good enough to do it against New England, and they're not good enough to do it now. Although maybe the Ravens can be that team, because they've always been good at being that foil, even if it's like a one-off. Yeah. And I'll tell you who could have been that. Is Andrew Luck and the and the Colts? Oh, I, I that, know. That yeah. was they were that that nineteen season. They were going in. You know, Luck was the comeback player of the year in eighteen. Uh-huh. They're coming into nineteen. Every, I mean, they were. I don't even think the Colts were a dark horse to win the AFC. They were probably the three. Horse. Like they were three. Yeah. The it was it was New England, Kansas City, and Indy, and they yeah. also had the defensive rookie of the year and and Darius Leonard, right? Who was Darius, not Darius, Shaq not at Shaq, the time. Yeah. Um, and then the retirement and then everything kind of goes to shit. And then you think, Oh my God, Jacoby Brissett, like this team might be good enough yeah. just to, to throw in Jacoby Brissett, maybe make a run. We beat the chiefs in Kansas city. And then he hurts his knee against Cleveland or against oh. Pittsburgh. He hurt his knee against Pittsburgh. Oh. And then he wasn't the same after that. It was, right. it was over. I, I remember it was like, we, we th- brought in like three other quarterbacks in that same game. Who's the famous backup from new England. Who was always behind Brady. Uh, Hoyer. Oh, we had Hoyer in that game. Had a few of those guys. Yeah. yeah. A few yeah. Hoyers. Um, funny, though, I was thinking about it This because you, you always said anytime the Colts beat the Chiefs, Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Yep. Um, Colts beat the Chiefs in week three last year by three yeah. points. They beat the Ravens in week three by three <sighs> points this year. Well, and the <laughs> right? logo theory. And then the logo theory. I don't know about logo. I just missed the old Super Bowl logos that were. Oh, I missed that ones. too. That was just a oh, terrible decision by the NFL. But yes, I've noticed that. People are saying it's got to be Ravens Niners, but you know the script. The it's script. The script. Yeah. Uh, Niners Packers. Mm. This one. What a game! Oh, I was so close. You were oh, so. It was, was twenty-one to seventeen, and all the way down. You should have seen me. You should have oh, seen I was, me watching. I was thinking of you the whole time. My <laughs> my dad. I was like, my dad was like, "Oh, you're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get it." And the, and you know, the score was like kind of. I think it was kind of getting a little too high by halftime. And I was like, this thing could stay if, if the weather comes back, if that rain comes back in and the offense slows down again, this score could stick just enough. And then when San Francisco got the ball late in the game, go and make that touchdown, yeah. you just knew. Like, you knew they were going to do it. Well, and Carlson missing the field goal, obviously, yeah. would have made it 24-17. And mm-hmm. then maybe it's tied, they go to overtime. Yeah. Um, ugh, you just you felt like the Packers... Like, I don't know, were they just hot or were they actually that good? Because I still can't get out of my mind that they gave up 30 points to Carolina, who then yeah. got shut out twice. Like, they were such a Jekyll and Hyde team. And this was kind of a Jekyll and Hyde game where, like, came out looking great. And that fourth down, my God, like, we talked about it. I talked about it with a bunch of my friends just in general. You can't 
you cannot leave the game in the hands of the officials, number yeah. one, and you can't leave the, the game in the hands of the kicker, maybe unless that kicker is Justin Tucker. You have to get points when you can get them. Yeah. I thought that was a forced rush decision to go for it early. Um, and then they kind of just, at times their defense just gave up these quick, long drives. Yeah. And at times their defense was just pressuring the heck out of Purdy's. I don't get it. They were so, they looked amazing at times. And I guess that's what you get when you have the youngest team in football. Mm -hmm. You have a, a young, I mean, Love is a fourth year quarterback, but he's a first year starter. So he's young. In my opinion, young, he's young. And yet he's older than Brock Purdy, who is old, really only in his first full season as yeah. a starter, which is kind of crazy. And, Purdy played a kind of a the same type of game where it was like at times he looked really good like on that last drive and at times he just looked like he can't do it in the rain he really can't yeah when he comes to rain he he looks like he can't do it well let's assume that it's not gonna rain I haven't checked the forecast in San Francisco this week but let's assume it's not raining well at least we know it's not in Detroit like Todd like that reporter with Todd Bowles I don't know if you saw that no some reporter was asking Todd Bowles well what are you gonna do about the weather you know in Detroit if if it's too cold. And Bowles like looks at him. He was very respectful about yeah, it, yeah, but he yeah. was like, "Well, I mean, it's good they have a dome. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really helpful." Yeah, that he's like, "Oh, did you mean going out to dinner? What am I going to do? I don't know. I'm trying not to eat outside. Maybe you just like drive in the car. You're afraid of, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. hydroplaning or something." No, Bowles is a nice guy. I mean, uh, I'm glad he kind of. Uh, um, but anyway, so yeah, so back to the 49ers, like. Mm -hmm. The talent is all there. Like, again, and, I, and this is why, I mean, look at the odds. The Niners are the Super Bowl favorite now. Yeah. They, and over the Ravens, which is, I think, a little crazy, but whatever. I get it. The Niners have been close many years. But um, there's a lot of pressure on the Niners in that game and, and this coming game. Like, you know, all the pressure was on them. Packers yeah. playing with house money. Um, I thought. LaFleur made some poor decisions. And I thought, obviously, Carlson just having a young kicker who you can't trust has got to be infuriating. When yeah, I mean, playoff game. you got to assume there's somebody else out there. If, if he so. says, and I know he was joking well, when he Crosby said. Crosby could have been that guy. But. I mean, anyone else. Like, I, I assume he was joking when he said, oh, I, every time he goes out there, I yeah. pray. Yeah. But, like, heard that. it's got to be, there's always a little bit of truth to that. Like there has to be well, any kicker, even, even yeah. Tucker. I mean, you know, you assume, but like, what if it's that one bad snap or that one kick? I mean, yeah, yeah. Remember he had that, I remember he had that missed extra point Tucker. They lost the Saints, like the one bad kick of his career. And then the rookie year, the one where he kicked it right over the goalpost against the Pats and Belichick assaulted the official. Anyway, <laughs> um, the, the 49, like the theory is, and I was reading, you know, the betting experts are the same thing. The theory and the fear, if you're a Lions fan is like, the 49ers just won a game they weren't supposed to, yeah. and they played poorly. So the odds of them playing poorly two weeks in a row in it's the playoffs low. is very low. And it's like, can they, you know, can the Lions overcome that? Um, but I don't know. I mean, the, to say that also is sort of disrespecting the Packers a little bit. I know the Packers played a pretty darn good game yeah. and the, the rainy conditions. Um, the big thing, I said this before the show, Debo Samuel, like it seems like the 49ers offense is just completely different without it. Not completely, yeah. but but very much impacted when he's not out there. And when they had their three game losing streak, I think Samuel was out at least two of those. It was it was you may have got hurt in one of them. I think he got hurt in one. I think he got Cleveland hurt against game? Cleveland. Yeah, that was the first game they lost. And then they lost. They also lost Williams. Too. Yeah. So it was Debo and Williams at yeah. the same time they were out. And I think CMC was banged up and they lost yeah. to Minnesota Monday night. And then they got beat up at home by the Bengals. Um, and then they didn't lose again until Christmas. So um, that that's a big and, and that obviously affected Purdy a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, he, you know, not having your top receiver is always yeah. going to be interesting. Um, they almost seem like. It's weird because there's so much like great talent. Like you, you can name five, five. Like yeah, they can. You can fill your hand with the amount of like all pro talent. Yeah, but when one goes, it seems like the whole thing kind of chain reaction. Yeah, right? and I think I said that last week when it came to Debo. I think I actually said Debo or Trent Williams. Like if you lose those two, this could really be a game. And they lost them, and and you know San Francisco didn't look the same. And again, the weather. What are you going to do? I mean, right, it's, it's right. weather, but they both had to play in it, too. Um, uh, I had one other point. I can't remember what it was now. Crap. Can't remember. Yeah. If you have anything else on this, I'll try and remember <laughs> it while you're, while you're talking about it. Let me see. 
I mean, if you look at the yardage here, Green Bay was pretty even. Like they they kind of they really hung around there. They actually had more first downs. Um, e- my or two under in plays, like twenty six less yards. Um, same drives, yards per play was pretty good. Uh, they didn't throw the ball as well, but they ran the ball pretty well. Uh, San Francisco does not stop the run. No, the, well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the stats. I mean, they got outrushed. The, again, I mean, I think that's another thing, too, because we'll talk about it. Obviously, it was a glaring thing in the Chiefs-Bills game. The yards per play is a, is a, probably a better indicator than total yards, yeah. honestly, because, you know, if you don't have the ball as much, it's for various reasons, ball yeah. control. Um, they're pretty even. I mean, the the Niners had a slight edge. five And 5.6 yards a play is pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um I just, I just thought it was a pretty evenly played game. I thought these two teams were pretty evenly matched. Now, the question is whether – are they evenly matched because Green Bay is a lot better than their record indicates? Are they evenly matched because maybe the Niners aren't as good as everyone thinks? I mean, they've been that he- prohibitive, heavy betting favorite all year, yeah. the 49ers. And I get it to an extent, and they are the number one seed, and they're at home in the championship game. But I don't know, like I just something about them doesn't feel as trustworthy as it should. Yeah. Like a team that good in the NFL should feel like yes, like they seem like a sure thing. There's never a feeling with the Niners that they are a sure yeah. thing to win them. Well, That's why they haven't won it in 29 years. Shanahan did get the monkey off his back with being down five or more points. That was the first yeah. heading into the fourth quarter. One in thirty. Sure. <laughs> Finally got it yeah, all. Look, it's a one score game. They were down <laughs> seven points, right? At the start of the, or maybe they were down four. No, I guess seven because you said five plus. So they got some luck. Eventually they're going to win one of those games. But yeah, it's, it, that's a little interesting, you know. Do, then maybe that's part of it too. And that's, the, that's been the talk with Lamar Jackson where like, do you feel like the Niners are the kind of team where if they're down 10 points late, Mm-hmm. That they can just automatically go right down, score, get a stop, score again. You know what I mean? Like, in the Niners were on the other side of that in the Chiefs Super Bowl. They had a 10 point lead late, uh, gave up the touchdown, couldn't put the game away, gave up another touchdown, couldn't get the go ahead touchdown, and then the Chiefs ran and got a score and, yeah. and really put the game away. So, I, I don't know. That's, that's what I feel like with, you know, that's the difference, I think, between the Chiefs and the Niners, for example, is just that. You know, if Mahomes, if you need a drive, you are shaking in your boots as a defense or yeah. as a opposing fan or whatever. But with the Niners, you're not. If you're like, yeah, Purdy might lead them down. They got a good offense, but we could also stop them here. Yeah, like, we've seen. Him you can struggle. force a mistake. You put yeah. the pressure down. Yeah, you pin your ears back. Hopefully, he'll make a mistake. Hopefully, he'll panic. Well, and that's always the thing they say. You know, it's hard for an offense to go all the way down the field not make a mistake. Mm-hmm. As the Bucks found out, let's say yesterday. Yeah. Um, Detroit, yeah. first conference championship since 91. Second ever. Second ever. Um, I, I have a buddy. I was watching the game with him, mm. and he's a diehard Lions fan. He's He says he remembers the playoff win. He was like 10 years old when it happened. Mm. And he was drunk, but he was sitting there sure. he watching this game. 10 years old, but okay. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It, it, this game, this game. Yeah. Okay. Which in the 90s, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, why not? That, that's pretty common. Yeah. Um, he's sitting there, and... The Lions were up 14, and he goes, there's no way we lose this. And I go, I look at him. Lions fan saying that. Everyone, everyone around us, we look at him, we go, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Shut up. And and Tampa goes down and scores a touchdown. Of course. And he goes, okay, if we lose this, I'm quitting. I'm quitting being a fan. I was yeah. like, shut up. Do not say a word. Like, just keep your mouth shut. He just wouldn't keep his mouth shut. Right. And then after they get the pick, he goes, it was never in doubt. Never in doubt. I was like, yeah, classic sports fan. I was like, okay. But a Lions fan, I mean, you would think they would learn. Well, you just said the narrative. We were talking about the the Chiefs and Patriots thing. That narrative just, it's like that. Like, suddenly you forget that for the entire Super Bowl era, you had a single playoff win and you've been the, probably the the worst franchise in terms of, you know, on-field success. Um, And now you're just like, yeah, there's no way we lose this game. Yeah, yeah, we got this. We won a game last week. We won it. Um, I'll say this. The Lions defense still scares me. And not in a not in a good way. Not not in the way that's like, oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I'm scared to face them. No, I mean they came up with the pick when they had to. They have been they have been, and this is so anti Lions, and this is what's beautiful about this Dan Campbell group, is that um they are just finding ways to win. Mm-hmm. We always talk about the Bills finding ways to lose, bad teams find ways to lose. The Lions 
have just been winning games by the skin of their teeth. And yeah. I know that they didn't win that one against Dallas that they should have and whatever. Mm-hmm. And they, they guess they were unfortunately the call or whatever. But for the most part this year, go back to opening night. And wouldn't that be interesting if it's Lions, Chiefs in the Super Bowl, bookending the season, with yeah. the opening game and then the final game. Um, but they, they pulled that one out. You know, they had the fake punt early in the game. I know Kelsey and Jones didn't play, but that was still a huge deal. Yeah. Um, they they won at Lambeau Field early in the year, which didn't look like much, but obviously looking back on it, they had a convincing win. Lambeau, they they hung on to beat the Vikings to win the division. That's a team that's always given them trouble. Um, they beat, let's see, they well, the Rams game was a classic example of that yeah. playoff game. You know, they the and the Rams didn't, by the way, and this just highlights my point from last week, the Rams didn't go for that fourth and 14 last week. Remember I was saying yeah. they punted and the Lions – and they only had one timeout, so the Lions only needed two first downs. Mm-hmm. The Bucks converted a fourth and 14 yesterday. And that's why they went down the field and got that touchdown to make it an eight. Should have been seven. I hate that whole going for two oh, or whatever that stupid thing. Don't, I don't give me another rant on that. Um, but they gave up. That, that shouldn't have even happened because it was fourth and 14. And yeah. again, like if when you need that stop in a postseason game, like you should be able to make that. Mm-hmm. Fourth and 14 should be a very low percentage. Yeah of conversion rate for the offense, especially Tampa, who's a solid team, but they're not a great team. Yeah. Um, but lo and behold, they, when they did really need a play, they got one from Barnes, the inter- Barnes, right? The interception. Um, it's just, the Lions just feel like they're so darn scrappy. They just might pull this off. It's, it's so, theme of destiny. Like it, it, it really feel. does feel like. And, and, and I've talked to friends who, and they keep trying to convince me that this hat, this season has the feel of like, this needs to be one of those team of destiny years. This yeah. can't be a Chiefs or Niners year, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if the Ravens are even a team of destiny. I mean, they've just been dominant, and they've obviously they've won in recent memory. But I think I feel like the Lions have to get to the Super Bowl somehow. They just have to. I mean, I yeah. know that that odds are against them. They're a seven point underdog. But Goodell has to work his magic. Like at some point, if somebody does. He he has to work his magic. The trainer to, get... to keep Debo Samuel out. Yeah. I'm not rooting for it, but I'm just, you know, he doesn't play. I'm sure the Lions won't be too upset about it. Yeah. They, they just, the, the defense though, again, like they can get some pressure, but the, the cover guys, mm-hmm. the cover, they just have trouble with, especially the big play receivers. They kind of, I'm not saying Evans torched him. Nakua absolutely torched him. Oh I have my to God, look at yeah. Evans' final numbers, but you just he feel was, like uh... they have trouble with those. I mean, I would say he torched him eight for 147 yeah. and a touchdown. Yeah. That's... I mean, again, so, now, the good news is the Niners don't necessarily have that one big, deep vertical threat. More mm-hmm. so, it's it's Kittle. Um, you know, those guys are dangerous on, like, crossing routes and, and just general speed. I feel like the Lions have speed on defense. That's mm-hmm. not the issue. It's it's just the ability to cover and stay on these guys, and these big physical receivers yeah. have given them a lot of trouble. So, And then just for Tampa, look, I know you, you said Todd Bowles probably shouldn't be there. There, yeah, I, I'm rethinking that now no, just I, because I, I like of Todd this game. Yeah, and I think the whole run, I mean, I think it's it's so hard to gauge when you're in a bad division. And they were only like, they were 9-8 and eight and they won a bad division. It's yeah. like, oh, well, how good can they really be? But then they beat up on Philly. Of course, everybody was beating up on Philly. And then they hung with, I thought they hung with the Lions. Like, they they started losing a lot of players mm-hmm. throughout the course of that game. And eventually they lost Jamel, uh, Jamel Dean. Um, it. Yeah, I think Tampa, I think they played admirably. I think they got, I mean, if you had told anyone before the year that Baker Mayfield was going to start every game, win the division, and win a playoff game, yeah, especially considering Brady had a losing record last year and lost his playoff game, I think Bucks fans absolutely would have taken it. And they yeah. were close, and they had a chance at the end with the ball, just didn't work out. So I think hats off to Bulls and the Bucks. Yeah. Because they got hot at the end of the year, right? They were, I want to say they were like four and seven at one point. Because they, cause they were three and one, and then they lost six of seven. And then going into yesterday, they had won six of seven. So they got hot when they needed to. They turned it on. Two and one. Yeah, they were see. they were three, three and, and one. one. And then, yeah. yeah, they started three and one, and then three and two, three and three, three and four, three and five, mm-hmm. four and five. So they were three and five. Yeah, so they, they were four, four and, and seven six. at one point, I think. Four and six, four and seven. Actually, yeah. they lost to the Colts. Yeah, and then they played a close one against Carolina, which I remember that was in the rain. That was like downpour. Yeah, rain in Tampa. Yes, that was like right after Thanksgiving. So yeah, they mm-hmm. lost six to seven, but then they won six to seven before losing yesterday. So I, I, 
I think Tampa, look, they were worthy of being there. I don't think they were like this, just the worst playoff team that ever got there. I mean, I think they were absolutely not. They had a good defense, a good run game. Also, though, I just, I'm glad Detroit figured it out in the second half. They were not running it at all. And Goff was under 100 yards in the first half. And I was just screaming, even though I'm not, I mean, I've become a Lions fan this year, certainly. Uh, But I was like, run the damn ball. And when they started doing that, they had great results. Mm -hmm. And they wore down that Tampa defense. And as the injuries were piling up, they really just, that that just crushed the Buck spirit. Well, what's really going to worry about me on Sunday is Dan Campbell. Right, and right. Yeah, he, so I mean, have like an emotional decision that's just going to backfire. Well, they were up seven at one point, and they're driving down the field. This was like probably this is going to win the game, but they could have just ran the clock down. They were running the ball all over Tampa. They were destroying them on the ground, mm-hmm. and he kept throwing. He kept throwing, and and the Lions fan I was sitting next to was justifying it by saying he's trying to put the game away. He's trying to put the game away. I was like, you can put the game away by running the ball here. Yeah, you can run the clock down. And they still can't stop you. You're going to run and score a touchdown anyways. Right. Why are you going to risk stopping the clock? Why are you going to risk uh, an interception, right. which I would say is much more higher risk than yeah. a fumble with Jameer Gibbs? Right. There, There's no reason to throw the ball. And he has repeatedly done that in, in situations where you don't need to. He he gets overly aggressive, and that's gonna that could be the bane of, of their existence the on bu- Sunday. Yeah, the Bucks dropped an interception in the end zone mm-hmm. early in the game. So Goff got away with one there. Yeah. Um, I understand maybe being aggressive if you're playing a team like the Chiefs yeah. or, you know, an explosive team, maybe, maybe the 49ers we're talking about Sunday. Um, but against the Bucks, there was no need to get cheap yeah. there. You just keep running it. Their defense is thin. They're worn out. Mm-hmm. You just need to run the clock. The Bucks offense, it's unlikely that they're going to be able to go right down. Although they did go right down the field before halftime. And again, that's yeah. always a concern that the, the Lions are capable of just giving up a a long touchdown drive mm-hmm. quickly and they just don't have those guys that can consistently make stops. But um, yes, Dan Campbell is overly aggressive and, and most people and Dan Campbell himself would probably tell you like, this is what got us here. Yeah. So we're you know, going back all the way to week one, that fake punt in like the second quarter against Kansas city at their own 17, like it worked right. And you can look at it cause they ended up getting a touchdown on that drive. Um, I, I get look if you're going to change the lions losing culture i i understand that you have to do some drastic i'm i'm fine not again them. yeah i'm fine if it's i mean i'm not fine but i'm understand if it's consistent if he keeps it consistent sure that's fine with me we know what to expect but we've seen like todd bowles who is not an aggressive coach whatsoever right Very going good. for two in a situation uh, when you I would rather know what I need going into the final drive. Right. Rather than possibly forced to get. Yeah. I, Collinsworth was defending it. I don't I don't know who invented this. I, I've always had this system for two point conversions. The coaches always go by the card. They don't think things through. I've had thoughts about when you're down thirteen and mm-hmm. you score late in the game, you actually might want to go for two to get within five. That way, if you don't get the onside kick, they're in plus territory. You can still give up a field goal. It's an oh, and you'll game. be fine. So thinking ahead, something like that, if someone did that, or even if you're down. Um, well, and then yeah, if you're down five, you also, if you go and score a touchdown, you go for two anyways. You right. go up three. You, you it, could go up the, three in that The case. extra point doesn't matter. Right, exactly. And this, so the whole, oh, no, you just need to score and get down six and then score again and go at one. But no, you're trying to think ahead. But this, for being down 14, I don't understand it at all. Collins was saying, well, he goes, it's not a guarantee. It's only a 95% proposition that you're going to kick two extra points. Like only a 95% proposition. Well, if I was going to Vegas and putting down a million bucks, I think I would take the 90 those odds of kicking two extra points. And I agree with you. See, Phil Sims. Oh, I miss Phil Sims. Anyway, um, I never thought I'd say that. He used to say, rule of thumb is you never go for two unless you absolutely have to yeah. say that all the time. I've always believed that even, you know, Mike McCarthy's good at that. He, to an extent, I've seen him like be down eight points and like midway through the third, and he'll kick an extra point just and and not go for the tie, just get within one. Yeah. That way, if you give up a touchdown, you're still down eight. You don't go for two unless you have to. If you're down fourteen and you go for two, what what are you accomplishing? Yeah, you could win it on the next drive, but you could be in a position that the Bucks were in of having to then get a two point conversion just to tie the game. Wouldn't you rather kick the extra point? Be you know thirty one twenty four. Then you can decide, yeah. hey, do I want to kick it and tie the game, go to overtime, or just go for the win? And I also feel like that is more of a mental mountain to climb if you're down eight 
trying to drive down yeah, the field I, right. versus down seven. It's like, you know, what, best case for yeah. you is a tie and worst mm-hmm. case for the defense is a tie. And best case is a tie with the eight. Worst case, you lose the game on trying on to drive down the field. Conversion. Yeah, you're, oh, you yeah. drive down the field. You put in all that effort. <laughs> and just because and then, you had to go for two. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the most frustrating, I mean, I was, the Super Bowls that I loved watching the most, but it was a painful result, was when Carolina lost to New England. And they were down 21-10 early in the fourth, and they scored, and John Fox went for two. Could have kicked the extra point, would have been 21-17. Yeah. Went for two, he missed it, 21-16. They went down, they scored again, had to go for two, mm-hmm. missed it. It was 22-21. <laughs> New England went down, got a touchdown. They went for two, got it, made it 29-22. Carolina went down, then scored a touchdown to tie the game. They kick off. Uh, the kickoff goes out of bounds, and then Patriots get in field goal range. Vinatieri kicks a field goal to win the game with like four seconds left. And I always thought about that because if Fox had just kicked the extra point both times, Vinatieri's kick at the end of regulation – would have just been the tie. Yeah. Of course, that was in Houston, the place where 13 years later the Patriots would win in overtime against an NFC South team in the Super Bowl. But point well, and, being, and like, you think why? about the yeah. the Panthers franchise. They've been to two Super Bowls, which is awesome for especially for a young franchise, young franchise like franchise, that. Yeah. They ran into Tom Brady and, and Peyton, Peyton Manning. Manning. Well, most and and we'll, when we get to the Chiefs, we'll talk about this. So the last 22 years, only seven quarterbacks have started for an a for an AFC team in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And four of those have covered 19 of those 22 Super Bowls. Brady, Manning, Roethlisberger, Mahomes. The three one-offs, if you will, Rich Gannon, Joe Flacco, Delaware Blue Hens, and, uh, and uh, Joe Burrow. So, yeah. But the Ravens, and we'll, when we get into we'll talk about this. The Ravens already, or well, the Ravens have a chance, and they're already the first team this century, first AFC team this century, to win, a super, to win multiple Super Bowls with multiple quarterbacks. You know, the Patriots always had Brady. The Steelers always had Roethlisberger. Yeah. The Colts and Broncos had Manning. They shared, you know, Manning. Um, and the Chiefs have had Mahomes. But the Ravens, they won it with Dilfer in 2000. They won it with Flacco in 2012. Lamar Jackson is far and away the best quarterback. Oh, my had. God. Yeah. So they have a chance to win it with – not that Flacco wasn't. I love Flacco, and I think he was a little – I heard a, actually, I actually heard a great interview with him on Pardon My Take this – or on Friday. He did a fantastic interview. He was hilarious. He was like personable. Guy, yeah. He seems like he was just like another one of the guys. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, he said he still thinks he can throw it like 75 yards yeah. in the air, which is insane that he can do that. And I would believe him too. And then he was talking about his time with the Jets where his kids were giving him shit because they were like, dad, you suck. <laughs> and he was like, well, I don't suck. We're just not winning right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, his kids don't even remember him winning a Super Bowl in those right. great Ravens teams that. I mean, battled Brady and in, in yeah. the playoffs. Like those were battles. I think road, yeah. a lot of people don't even for, don't even remember that. I think those those were like battles. It wasn't like oh, I they just owned remember, them. Yeah. Oh, you remember? Yeah, I remember, yeah. The the majority of the right. public that aren't Ravens fans, yeah, they probably remember that as oh, the the Pats just kind of beat the Ravens every year, right? And they, they didn't think anything else of it. But it, those were I'll never I'll never forget those. Those were fights. Yeah, and Flacco. He has tied with Brady. I was wrong, I think, last week I said, or whenever, that he had the most road wins ever. He's tied with Brady with seven. Six different postseasons where he won a road playoff game. And he won two the year they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, And just like that, you just don't do that by accident. There's Mm -hmm. a certain level of mental toughness. Obviously, you have to have a good team around you. But And Mark Sanchez did. I mean, Mark Sanchez won what? Four road playoff games in those two years, and they beat Indy. Haters. They beat Indy and Indy. That was uh, 20, pretty sure that was Manning's. Well, that was 2010 because they lost yeah. to Indy in the championship game in 09. Oh nine! But they had beaten. I want to say they won two road. They beat the Bengals and the Chargers before that, and then in 2010 they beat Indy and New England. So you beat Man- Sanchez's Jets, beat Manning's Colts, and Brady's Patriots. Back but lost back. to lost to Ben's. Well, that's, but that's the big three. That mm-hmm. was the big three for 16 years, where it was literally all always those quarterbacks, except yeah. the one time Flacco made it. So um, I hope Flacco comes back. I do. I, I, whether it's with the Browns or I actually prefer it not to be with the Browns, just because I'd like to root for him, not in the division. But I hope he, I hope he can still be out there slinging it next year. Yeah. Um, actually, I wanted to go back to the 49ers for a second. Okay. There's a big free agent quarterback, and I was just kind of um, brainstorming this. There's a free agent quarterback this year, Baker Mayfield. 
yeah. to the 49ers. I think that's... Look, they're going to dump Brock Purdy. They I'm might. Throw like six interceptions. Uh, ima- imagine, if, uh, imagine if he plays like shit. He shits the bed on Sunday. That's possible. They say, yeah. we have this fantastic team. We can't waste our time with this guy. Baker Mayfield is right out there. Mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins looks like he's going to stay. I would assume in, in Minnesota. I mean, he was he was at their game like week seventeen. I want to say shirtless, uh, yeah, ring, ringing right. the bell that's or doing right, something. Yeah. So I have a feeling that man is getting a lifetime contract. There, he's he's going to retire there. Yeah, but Baker, I think Baker would be especially what we saw with Sean McVay, what he was for what two games. I mean, he came in and won yeah, that game yeah, last yeah, year. That's right, the Thursday nighter against the Raiders. Mm-hmm. And and Sean McVay and Shanahan are kind of the same, you know, the NFC West head coaches that are young phenoms mm-hmm. and they're they're great game planners. They can make anybody work. Right. I think I think Baker Mayfield could be a and, and he's a gunslinger. He's a gunslinger. You need a gunslinger. Yeah, I mean things just the Niners really like haven't had great quarterbacks. I think Garoppolo, Trey Lance didn't yeah. work out. Alex Curry Smith was, was like Alex their Smith. best. Yeah, and, they, and they, they call him the game manager, whatever. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, that would be interesting. And I'm seeing prop bets already circulating about where Josh Allen will be next year because the Bills ha- are about – They have 47 mil. Yeah, something like that over the cap. Yeah. So there's a lot of big decisions there. And you wonder if, like, with the 49ers, like, it's John Lynch, he'll, he'll, he'll swing a big trade if he has yeah. to. And we'll they, I think they still a have a, a good amount of cap space left. I think San so. Francisco and I like I'm like New Orleans needs John Lynch because New Orleans is always in cap hell. Right. It, it, that's the big storyline going into the offseason every year. They're like no, and I feel like this is going back to like the Breeze day, like the sure like early 2010s when New Orleans was still in cap hell, and you're like, all right, well they'll figure it out eventually, right? You would yeah. think, and they just can't get out. They're always deep, deep, deep in the negatives. Yeah, in the, in the cap, and I'm like, why don't you just hire a guy like John Lynch just to get you out of that and completely reset? Because somehow the Niners don't go over. I don't know how. Right. I really don't know how. They're they're deferring their contracts. Like yeah. The Dodgers, well, I guess. Joe Hay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everything's backloaded to 2048. Yeah. Niners will be paying for it then. Um, let's see. All right, Kansas City Buffalo, the best game of the weekend. Yes. This could have been an all-time classic if Tyler Bass makes that field goal, I think. Yeah. Because it could have sent to overtime and we could have had a legend, I would say possibly legendary overtime. Well, we would have we haven't uh, have we seen the new overtime rules in effect since they changed them based on that previous Bills Chiefs playoff game? Well, the new one that's only for the playoffs, right? Only for the playoffs. I don't think last year we didn't this get year, one. We've had an overtime postseason game. Um, something tells me, though, even if Bass had made that field goal, I think Mahomes, the way they were moving the ball, they still had plenty of time to go down and yeah. win the game. So I told you this before. I think it was a good game. I think before people start immediately assuming that this is McDermott's fault, although the fake punt, well, I don't know what the hell that was. He got that out was of that. As bad as, yeah, well, that was almost as bad as the Chuck Pagano <laughs> Punt, right, the the one where there was like the one guy behind. I'll anyway. never forget watching. Well, every time now, because I'll see like Steichen will line up in some weird formation to try and draw the guys off sides. PTSD back to that. I see it and I'm like, oh my god, no, no, yeah, no. That, that fake punt, yeah. Like I, it's like an Interstellar. Have you ever seen Interstellar? No, but I think there I there's a uh, scene where he's looking. He's watching himself in the past do oh, something, right, and he's right, banging right. on the wall, going, right, right. no, no, no. And that's exactly what I do every single time. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't do it. Please don't snap we this ball. We all need to have those interstellar moments. Um, <laughs> would be a better society. But I, I agree with you. Or That was almost as bad as what was the one that Dallas did against San Francisco on the last play where, like, Elliott was, like, an ineligible oh, receiver. Oh, yeah. He snapped the ball. Or something. Well, anyway. Dallas, they had two in a row. They had the, the DAC slide with, like, oh, 13 seconds to right, go. right. And then they had the uh, the other one where they, I think the game was over. I mean, the game was really right, but over. It was just like a, what you know, it's just a bad optics. Yeah. But um, but before I was saying before we get, you know, before we were run off with McDermott's head and Allen, I actually thought the game plan was about as effective as it could be because Buffalo was severely undermanned on defense. They had a lot of injuries, key injuries. Um, that had accumulated and guys that had been hurt over the last couple of weeks. And then guys who got hurt during the game yesterday, yeah. they were very undermanned. They knew that there's no excuse for Travis Kelsey being left alone wide open in the mm-hmm. end zone. 
that was a, a failure. And I think McDermott has to look at himself more so um, for the defense because I think the defense was still more at fault. The Chiefs had 7.7 yards per play yesterday. They just ran like 30-something fewer plays. Yeah. They were dominating. And the game plan of Joe Brady and the Bills was protect the ball as much as you could. Buffalo didn't turn it over. I mean, they had the fake punt, so they turned it over on downs. But there were no fumbles or interceptions. Um, so they didn't do anything stupid in that regard. They ran the ball really, really well. And they, they kept running it. Yeah. But when Kansas City started to adjust, which inevitably good teams are going to do that, um, I just I think it, it's just got to be tough for the Bills on so many levels. But for one thing, if I had told you that Josh Allen would not be sacked and the Bills would not turn the ball over the entire game against Mahomes and the Chiefs, you just said, boy, I, I'll take my chances. Yeah. And they still couldn't get it done. And honestly, for everybody that's talking about Tyler Bass, if McCall Hardman doesn't fumble at the half-yard line, if either one of those two Buffalo fumbles get recovered by the Chiefs. Now, I know the Chiefs also fumbled, recovered one of their own. The, the Bills got some lucky bounces in that game. They Absolutely. also got bailed out from that fake punt. I thought my point I was trying to make initially was the Bills made this game a lot more competitive than it should have been. They were So I don't know exactly how much we can say is coaching, how much of it was just Josh Allen putting the team on his back. and But that Buffalo receiving core, I, I don't want to be rip on Stephon Diggs too bad, but you look at his numbers in Bills elimination games, they have not been good. And he yeah. let that one clank off his hands like you have to make. If you're going to be a big-time player, they always say big players make big plays in big yeah. games. And Diggs has not done that. And when you think about the last time the Bills went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chiefs in the playoffs, they're getting closer, by the way. They lost by 14, 6, and now only 3. Um, Gabe Davis had four touchdowns. Gabe Davis was out yesterday. Yeah. So they're... Thin at receiver. They're very thin at linebacker in the secondary. And the two guys that did play that were last minute decisions were clearly not 100%. Rasul Douglas and Taron Johnson. So um, I, I, just, I just felt like there was no way Mahomes wasn't going to win that first road playoff game. I mean, just so much talk. Like everything, it was just like Brady. Every time there was a number that no, or something that no one had done before that he hadn't done, it was like a personal mission to put that yeah. to bed. And. Yeah, I'm sick of the Taylor Swift and the Jason Kelsey thing or whatever. We talked about it. And I hope to God the Ravens can, can put them away. But the Chiefs are here for a reason. They have a really good defense. They run the plan. Pacheco, he didn't play in that first meeting. Yeah. He gives them a different element. He really yeah. does. Well, I mean, when they were trying to close out the game at the end. Yeah. They, nine I think, yards on first yeah, down. It was yeah. like immediate. Right. And, and I was like, well, some Chiefs fans were like cheering because I was at a Chiefs bar. Right. And I was like, well. Calm down. You guys got that a little too quick. It was like you, I, I mean, it's important to pick up the first down because it was two first downs that right. I think they needed to close it out. And Pacheco gets the nine yards. And I was like, you almost kind of don't want that because he did it so quick. I think they needed, what well, you're talking about after the field goal, I think they only needed one at that point. But here's the thing. If you're a defense, and not that I'm qualified to coach defenses, but my feeling is, well, if you're the Chiefs, you want to give Pacheco a head of steam. So I expect to see more tosses and mm -hmm. plays where you can stretch him out a little. And then if you're the defense, you have to find a way to shoot those gaps a yeah. quicker if you can. Um, here's the thing with the, with the upcoming game. So we talked about the Bills being decimated by injuries, right? And that's a big part of the playoffs. Like you have to be healthy because you don't have that. It's not like baseball where you can just you know, make trades or – you know, it's not so much a one star, or two star. Like, there's no skill position. Well, also, be I, I think that's because of the playbook. I think the playbook is a massive it, thing with that because these guys study the playbook all off season. Right. They work on the playbook and work on on understanding the playbook all like all through the preseason. And you're still you can still see the guys working on it through the first few weeks of the regular season. Like if, if you go and trade for a guy, a lot of times he's kind of limited in, in what he can do. Right. You almost want him. You almost want him to be like a Travis Kelsey, who just, hey, go find the open space. Right. Right. Go, you don't or have Gronk, any routes. Who never watched film of that. Yeah. Gr oh, Gronk According didn't care. Kelsey, he, he was yeah. just a monster. To, you couldn't yeah. guard him even if you knew where he was yeah, going. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Um. I agree. Right. And so there's that that whole chemistry where it's like baseball. Yeah. Maybe your pitcher, you got to work with the catcher a little bit. For mm -hmm. most part, your hitter, just go in. You're facing the same guys you face. Yeah. So it's not it's not the same, and and fortunately for the Ravens, they there's a good chance they'll get Mark Andrews back, maybe Marlon Humphrey, and the Chiefs. I got to say this: we could talk a lot about Chiefs players and Chiefs coaches. The Chiefs training staff, first of all, getting Mahomes 
to be able to play three playoff games last year yeah. with a with a high ankle sprain, mm-hmm. which knocked Tom Brady out of his first championship game because Bledsoe had to come in back in 01. Yeah. Um, it's a, you know, the fact that they have been very fortunate with players missing, uh, you know, significant players missing any significant amount of time. Kelsey has been on the field almost his whole career. Yeah. Chris Jones hasn't had any major injuries. The, you know, I said Pacheco was out a couple games. Um, he was out for that first Buffalo meeting, which was big. They they only have a couple guys on IR, a couple notable guys. I mean, Jarek McKinnon, um, Cook, I think one of their safeties. But Willie Gay got hurt. He's expected to play. Um, McDuffie tweaked an ankle. Joe Tooney. But they're very they're healthy. Yeah. The Bills were not, and that's that's another thing that the Chiefs. They're they're. I don't know what it is. I don't know why some teams. Oh, the Bills always seem to have injuries. Mm-hmm. Miami always seems to have injuries. So you can't say it's Miami's chip. Miami's chicken shit. Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> they are they are. Ass yeah, whatever. they're candy ass chicken shit. Whatever. And, and I always wonder: <laughs> is it just is it technique? Is it just players who, you know, like I I'll tell you, just watching Lamar Jackson, I hold my breath every time. He he's, he's actually such a violent runner. Like he's so fast and explosive. He's he like, he's the one guy where because because I I didn't I understood why the running quarterback hasn't worked worked I guess right. because I don't think offensive play callers know how to properly use them and yeah. I don't think they give them enough time as well to to develop and kind of settle into the system because they're going to suck for a while it, it seems like Lamar is a different style of runner where he is so elusive I'm actually confident that he won't get hurt well and he's very aware yeah where and I think when he got hurt Last year, I think it was on a sack. It was on just a traditional pass. I can't remember with his knee. And then I know we had his diarrhea issue too a few years ago. Right too. in Cleveland, <laughs> he yeah, had to leave yeah. the game. Probably that doesn't happen. Anymore. <laughs> um, but I, I think, yeah, when I think also play callers are hesitant to run their quarterback too much because yeah. they just don't want him taking too many hits. But you're right, Lamar is unique in that way. Look, Mahomes had a couple of massive runs. First of all, I and it, and it's easy for me to say because when you're in that moment, you don't know how you're going to react, but. Why are guys going for the throw fake when they're five yards past the line? Of I know. You go like this, and the guy's jumping. Like, just go to hit him at that point. You're not going to well, block the throw. N- now the only the only reason they'll fall for it is the Allen lateral Yo, early yeah. in the game. Don't remember get that? Those fans started on laterals. Maybe the gods <laughs> were just being nice because of the Music City Miracle, <laughs> right? And um, you know, and then sadly we just lost Frank Wycheck a short yeah. while ago, who was uh, who threw that lateral. But, um, yeah, I mean, I understand. And the Chiefs did it to the Bills, but it didn't count. I actually thought with all the crazy bounces that were going the Bills' way yesterday, like that was finally the day that yeah. karma should – because that first meeting, when that happened and the Bills got away with that, I was like, maybe this is the break that gets Buffalo going. Like maybe mm-hmm. this is the moment where all those past demons go out and they went on this winning streak. And then yesterday you have these fumbles bouncing their way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you had the, the Allen lateral and you had the McCole Hardman fumble at the half yard. Like, it was like, it just felt like Buffalo was living a charm life and they weren't supposed yeah. to win. And then they just, the gods just couldn't let it be. They had to bring wide right, uh, Jim Nance with the call. So it was a great game. And, and I, again, I think my takeaway is you actually have to give Buffalo credit for keeping it as close as they did because they were, they were outmanned. They were. Yeah. Um, the fake punt was, yeah. and I get it. it was Demar Hamlin. It would have been a nice. Oh my god! Play. I, I actually, when I saw it was Hamlin, I started pointing and telling everyone that was Hamlin. Yeah, that yeah. was Hamlin. Why him? Like, why not? I guess it's because it's not as obvious if you put, you know, uh, Cook back. There, they're trying. They're know? trying to maybe they're trying to get him the comeback player of the year. Yeah, so like he he's know. played in like five snaps all year. Yeah. They're like we need to get him. I mean, if if he wins comeback player of the year, it, I think it's a travesty because Baker Mayfield. Or Flacco should be, or Flacco. Yeah, but Baker played the whole season. I think Baker yeah. could be the could be the one that takes over Flacco, but it has to be Baker to me. Which what well, we can talk about that after the Super Bowl. Yeah, but Hamlin, the 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 hand. I mean, the only <laughs> the legacy that he left is the ham ambulance. You know what the ambulance is? I don't. It's the ambulance in the Bills Stadium that is decorated with. Demar Hamlin, all over it. Well, and it just occurred to me that Travis Kelsey did th- <laughs> he did, did this to Taylor, to Taylor. Taylor, but and I didn't think of it at the time, but that was like somebody on the Bengals, I think it was last year that they said that he was mocking it, or or somebody did it, and or on social media or something, and and someone was upset because they thought they were kind of 
poking fun at Demar Hamlin or something. And obviously Kelsey wasn't in no way. No, I, I but it think... was just interesting because I remember somebody did it last. Or there's something to do with that. I don't remember what it was. I think it was the Bengals. Yeah, uh, or maybe it was, no, maybe it was the Steelers. That's what it was. The guy made a play and he did, or he did a cardiac arrest. I don't remember what. There, was so there, there is a Mad- like that. there is a Madden celebration too. If you're playing Madden and you score a touchdown, sometimes they'll do the they'll do like a the CPR revival. Oh, I see. I see. And yeah, and. Well. They did it like somebody caught it like it was like the night that happened. They were playing Madden and they did the celebration. And they caught it on video. They were like really Madden. I was yeah, like, yeah. you can blame the AI. Yeah. You can blame the CPU. No, it was a celebration. I think the Steelers yeah. actually did, but they had to. Anyway, um, yeah, too bad it didn't work out for them. I it just, it's a, it's a unique. I I had um, also was texting somebody I know is Bills fan and um, they just said it's a unique experience being a Bills. It's a unique level of disappointment because they're close like the lions well i mean wide right like the, that's the second well, wide four super bowls the the game against the chiefs a few years ago that's the second wide right in their franchise history well, and and i just referenced the music city miracle yeah you know it's it why is it always the bills and mm-hmm. when, and and they're that close like the lions haven't been that close so their disappointment is just like we don't even expect to be here but the bills yeah. are getting these opportunities they go to four straight super bowls it's just the city and the city needs it so bad like that place would just kill to have and their their hockey shit. team is like horrible oh brett right hall now. was in the crease in 99 i mean that was the sabers one chance so ah uh, poor buffalo that's all i gotta say but again but also i don't know they were throwing snowballs and stuff after the game there's no excuse for that yeah. somebody said they cut off the hot water yeah that's what i heard as well game. come on but that well i think I, they're trying to heat up sean mcdermott's seat <laughs> yeah yeah it could be that i uh Even i all the heat in the bills yeah locker room i, I think I, I think he's got to be gone. I mean, it's it's not even because of his. It, it's hard for me to say that he should be gone because of like, oh, he he made a stupid decision, right? But I think it's more. It's just this thing has been continuously going. They've been trying and they fail right. every year. There there has to be a time where you say, enough is enough. We need to we need to do basically a soft reset. Now you said Allen could be gone. I don't know if they'll that's get rid of him. Hard reset if you do that. Yeah, that's a hard reset. Um, I feel like you keep some key guys. You probably get rid of Diggs. I'd say you kind of invest in Shakir to be your number two guy, and you go out and draft another uh, a number one because Shakir. I mean, besides he went out with an injury, but he came right back. He was having a great game. Yesterday. Oh, that that throw to him in the corner of the end zone was a mm-hmm. dime. I thought Allen played great. I I he think played, I think he played almost perfect. Except for the final drive. They needed a play to well, be made. He didn't make right the throw. And again, like you're talking about the bass kick. Diggs was open on a crossing route underneath. Yep. He also underthrew the guy in the end zone. I don't remember if that was the same play where he that was that was the same play. play. Romo, Romo, I can already I can already hear it in my head. Well, you know, Allen was was hit. He was he, hit. Well, he, that, that's he, why he was short. Open guy. Yeah. And and like Diggs just didn't he Diggs fumbled on the first play of the game. Yeah. Let's not forget that. And Buffalo was in a second and seventeen because I think it was Kincaid knocked the ball out of bounds. They threw the flag for that. Yeah, thirteen. Think, it was second and thirteen. No, well, that's what the telecast had originally, and then they got it. Back. Oh, did they? It was, it was like a three-yard play, and then it's ten yards from the spot. Okay. The point being is that I mean, Buffalo didn't make any. Um, uh, Buffalo, I think, had one stop the whole game. Of course, one yeah. punt, right? And that was on the last drive before they went down and missed the field goal. I think. I'm mean, not yes. including the play before the half where they had like one play. Um, but. My feeling is that, you know, it, you're right about Sean McDermott. The, the only re- the, the only reason you would fire him is I think is if you could get a Bill Belichick or a Jim Harbaugh. I think I think that's the guy they need. I, I I've said something like that. I think he needs to stay in the AFC East, and everyone nobody will agree with me on this. I think he needs to go to Miami more than anything. They Actually, need well, yeah, they need the grit. Gonna, they, they they're, they're not going to the fire. They're not going to fire McDaniel. But I remember when you said I think maybe we talked about this earlier. But, I mean, Belichick in Miami is he, – he's the guy that's going to turn the AC down to, to 30 and in the dome and say, all right, now you play. Let's fucking do it. Like, yeah. We're, and I'm going to play gonna, shirtless. Or, you know, the, the, the 72 Dolphins used to talk about in the old days, man, in practice, they wouldn't give him any water. They'd, play, they'd be practicing yeah. in the summer. Miami. And you know Belichick is studying everything from that seventy two. Oh yeah, of course. Constantly. Of course. Remember, I can still picture Belichick going like this with his rings when the Super Bowl was in Miami with the Kansas City San Francisco game and they were booing the hell out of him. <laughs> yes, he would fit there. He would fit in Buffalo. He could be H C B U F, right? He was H C N Y J for a day or something with that whole thing. Yeah. Um 
Uh, but yeah, I just, it, but for Buffalo, man, I, you're right. It's like, what can you do to get out of this run? I don't know, but this is, they, they need, they need more depth on defense. They just, I think they need to keep investing in defense, but they need receivers too. But you just think, how do they keep losing so many bodies? Is it just the cold I weather? I don't know what it is, but. All right. Well, the great divisional games, good, good commentary. Let's talk conference championship and then we'll get out of here. Yeah. Um, Chiefs Ravens at three o'clock uh baltimore opens at three and a half point favorites right now mm. i know they're at home but i mean it's the chiefs i know it's I it's know. and vegas doesn't account for stuff like that but i almost feel like they should like i feel like you kind of have to like the brady effect is always something you know yeah. it doesn't matter where he's who he's playing against like i would have if they beat dallas last year in the wild card with brady i wouldn't have been shocked whatsoever i would have been like well it's tom brady like, yeah what are we talking about here? Right. Um, I, yeah, I, I'll let, I'll let you talk more about this one. Well, I think, and I was talking to my friend about this yesterday who, who, you know, we know our, our betting stuff. We've seen a lot of this over the years, but um, I think the, the way the line was trending was telling you to take chiefs. I mean, you had, you hadn't had a road team win yet. It's pretty rare that all four home teams are going to win mm-hmm. too. Um, and you just had this, feeling like again you're right the Mahomes factor the Brady factor uh it's t- I mean three and a half is always such a dangerous line to to lay those points right you always yeah. want to just buy it to three or two and a half the Ravens see I, I'm trying to think if are they so like the, I was saying the theme of this weekend is kind of like the the contender against the or, or the um not David versus Goliath what are you saying like boxing like the you know the, the like the undercard the 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 Sort of the I mean, like fighter against the heavy Rocky weight. versus Apollo. Right. Yeah, kind of like that. Like the challenger and the contender, I think is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. And the Ravens are not your traditional challenger, if you will, because the franchise is, is used to this. But these this team is not. And the Chiefs have been here six years in a row. And it's just, you just feel like they, like what's dangerous with the Chiefs is you know there's no way in hell, unless Mahomes gets hurt, that they're getting blown out. Yeah. Like the, if the Ravens are going to win, it has to be probably a one score game. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't think the chiefs, I think they lost one game in the last two years by more than one score. That was when Mahomes was under the weather in Denver and they lost 24 to nine. Regular season. Mistakenly forgotten yeah. that a couple of weeks ago on the show. Um, regular season and playoffs. Well, his, no, well, I mean, since 2021, okay. they had a blowout loss to the Titans and Mahomes got yeah. like mildly concussed in that game. I know they had the Super Bowl loss in 2020. That was what 31 to nine, but all um, the five other Chiefs losses this year have all been by eight points or less. And the three losses last year were all one score losses. So, like, if you're the Ravens, you, you have to be mentally ready for that. And you have to think of those situations. And they were able to win a game against the Chiefs. Well, that was two years ago, but they pulled that rabbit out of their hat. I, but if I'm, if I'm betting on this game, I'm probably buying a point or two on the Chiefs and thinking that that's, it's just the safest bet. And hey, you're happy if the Chiefs end up losing. Yeah. You're all happy if the Chiefs end up losing, unless you're from Kansas City. And I just, um, it's going to be a close game. It just is. Like I think because the Ravens had a blowout last week, it almost has to be. Yeah. And then there's that theory I was saying for the Niners, where it's like they won a game they shouldn't have. They're probably going to play a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, I did predict Detroit, San Francisco before the year, three seed versus one seed. But then I said Jets, Chiefs, so I lost them. <laughs> no, I mean obviously Rodgers getting hurt didn't help, but. Um, so I'd like to think, and, and in the game, I, I even did a score. I said, the Niners were going to win on an overtime touchdown, overtime, touchdown. overtime, touchdown. We may get to see that overtime play out. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Chiefs Ravens, I, if Mark Andrews comes back, um, are I'm, you afraid Lamar will rely a little bit too much on him? Yeah. Well, that, that, that was, that's been their issue in the past yes. when, when he's in there because he's such a great talent. Around, yeah. But it's like, okay, you need to realize you have Zay Flowers out there. Well, I, wor- I also worry about the Ravens' offensive line because they had a couple sacks before halftime. Lamar was under a lot of pressure in the first half. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And it, the Chiefs have a good pass rush, which, got, which was neutralized yesterday because Buffalo ran it well. Yeah. If the Ravens can run it well, obviously that takes the effectiveness away of guys like Chris Jones. But yeah. – if they're not, and if the Ravens get behind and they have to start throwing, can the line hold up against a Chiefs defense that's going to pin its ears? And you know Spagnuolo yeah. loves to send oh my crazy God, pressure. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah. is, this will be a matchup of two defenses that are just going to throw 
the kitchen sink at the opposing quarterback. Mm -hmm. Um, And to me, it's going to come down to, again, limiting mistakes. I mean, it it stinks for Buffalo that they won the turnover battle yesterday and lost the game. Usually that's, that's the formula you need to beat the chiefs. But my hunch is if the, my hunch is in this game, Mm -hmm. the the winner of the turnover battle is the winner of the game. And it's going to be close. I, uh, I don't want to pick it because it's just, I'm too nervous. Uh, I just, my prediction is that it's close. And if you're betting, I think the best advice would be to buy a few points with the Chiefs yeah. and play that. Um, I'm just looking at the Chiefs history this year. Um, yeah, the Buffalo game was the most points they've given up to an AFC team all year. 24. Uh, they gave up 27 to Green Bay, which they lost in the regular season. But besides that, they have not given up anymore. So I feel like their defense is going to rebound. Because, the Chiefs? Yeah, the Chiefs. Yeah, well, the the um, the Chiefs were the only team in the NFL not to give up more than twenty seven in a game this year. Oh wow! Yeah, um, Buffalo only gave up thirty once, and they were the other team I think that only gave up thirty at least once. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about nineteen games with the Chiefs yeah. of not giving up more than twenty seven points. So if you're the Ravens' defense, you got to figure you've got to hold the Chiefs to yeah. low twenties or teens to win this game. I mean, not to say that the Ravens couldn't be that first team, Mm -hmm. but again, that, that, and that was such a staple of new England. We talked about Kansas city being so similar to new England, like Belichick's defense. There would be years where they were like 2011 and they were like 31st against the pass or something, but they just don't give up points. Yeah. They, they figure out ways to make the offense, make a mistake. And that's what I worry about. Mm -hmm. After that uh, Packers game with the 27, they gave up 20. 17, uh, 20, 17, <laughs> and 12, which, I mean, that was against the Chargers. So. Yeah, the offenses they played weren't great. I mean, Buffalo, they, they gave up the 20 against, and the Raiders, they gave up the 20. Mm-hmm. But, right, the Packers was the highest scoring output against them this year. I feel, I feel like they're due for a rebound, they, uh, the defenses. Well, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, look, because they also, they I mean, no sacks and they had no turnovers mm-hmm. and they got torched on the ground. And I feel like that even the score wasn't reflective of how offensive of a game it was. There was three punts all game, right? All game. And because they were running the ball so much, you know, the, the game was just moving. It was going quick. I remember sitting there. I was like, the first quarter felt like it lasted five minutes. Yeah. Like it was just constantly going. And I remember sitting there at halftime. I was like, if I told you that the Chiefs and Bills were in a game where there was one punt in the first half, you would think the score was like 28-28, you know, heading right, into halftime. Right, right. And it was like, I don't know, 17-10, 17-14, 17-13. Yeah. I mean, it it wasn't they, – they found a way. Well, and that, it and seemed like they found a way. Well, what's interesting is in a game where the Chiefs almost averaged eight yards of play mm-hmm. and only had that one turnover but also had – that was off the fake punt that they shouldn't have gotten. And they were moving the ball up and down the field. Like in the past, I feel like that's a guaranteed 40 burger for the chiefs, but this year it's only 27 Mm -hmm. and against Miami, they were kind of doing the same thing, moving the ball up and down the field. They ended up with 26, not to say that they, you know, couldn't have scored more maybe. And Miami's offense was a part of that because she's not doing moving the ball really. Uh, But my feeling is the opportunities to, to limit the Chiefs' points is, is are there. Mm-hmm. You know, and the Ravens are good at forcing turnovers. Like they, they had a couple of drives with Houston where Houston got close to field goal range, the Ravens bent, but they didn't break. Yeah. And they've been good at that. And that's why the Ravens are the top scoring defense in the league this year. But um, to me, like, yeah, it, it's going to be whether the Ravens can just, can just capitalize and score enough points. Yeah. I'm going to go Ravens 30 30- 24. I mean, I was thinking that would probably be how the game would play out one way or the other. I mean, I, uh, I feel like it's going to be know. kind of a late score from the Ravens and you're going to have like a Mahomes, but it's going to be a failed comeback. I feel like it's finally time. Ta- like, cause I, I always say if you're not in the AFC title game for the chiefs, it's a waste of Patrick Mahomes. Like you're wasting a year of his, pri- especially his prime. Mm-hmm. And this you can't consider this a waste anymore. I think they're going to go down fighting, especially because they won the Super Bowl, and historically they don't win two Super Bowls in a row. 
Well, teams in the, in the past, at least. Brady, we haven't, Brady's yeah. out of the league now. My theory was like, oh, the first year he's out of the league. Now, Mahomes, <laughs> now that Mahomes is the new Brady, now he can do it. Because Brady prevented it twice. Prevented Russell Wilson from going back to back. Mm-hmm. And he prevented Mahomes from going back to back. Um, and now it's up to Lamar yeah. or maybe Brock Purdy or Jared Goff to prevent him from going back to back. But, yeah, it's there's again, I stick to my gut. There's no way this game isn't a one-score game yeah. either way. I mean... I, not could the Ravens get blown out? Probably not, but maybe. Um, they don't get blown out though. That's no. the like the the Ravens three losses. Well, the three that Lamar played. Um, they you know they had the Colts, but they just that was a wacky, game. weird weather game. Too. Yeah, like, they, that was a safety, but then they yeah. gave up the field. and Gay hit four fifty plus yarders. Yeah, oh, he was he was the, the MVP. Of that. Yeah, he won them that game. And then the Steeler game, they had a ten three lead, and there was some weird. There was a there was a play where the Ravens weren't supposed to snap it but Linderbaum snapped it because he thought the guy yeah. was in the neutral zone and they turned it over um and then the game against Cleveland they had a 24 to 9 lead but Lamar threw a pick six mm-hmm. um and they let that one slip like the Ravens also don't lose by a lot yeah so I mean again that's why I said that the only like the safest bet here is to just buy up some points with the Chiefs yeah I just c- cannot imagine a scenario where it's not a one score game. Mm-hmm. I just can't. I mean, it could, right? The crazy things, or maybe there's a late field goal to put it away or something. You know, it's a 10 point game, but you know, people, because people always say, you know, oh, this is going to be two great teams, always going to make a great game. Doesn't always work that way. Sometimes yeah. they just don't match. That's why super, right. So that's why some Super Bowls have ended 55 to 10, maybe. Yeah. Um, but this one, like, again, it's just the way the style of these teams, the, the mental toughness and the experience. Mm hmm. Um, I mean Har- Harbaugh too. Like he's and he's he, been and he, there. Yes. Well, people, even Ravens fans probably couldn't tell you where where was John Harbaugh's previous job. He was Andy Reid's special teams coach. Oh, really? With the Eagles. Yeah. He may have, I don't know if he got moved up to an offensive or defensive system. For many years, he was the Eagles' special teams coach. Huh. So he worked with Andy Reid. Harbaugh's been the Ravens' head coach. This is year sixteen. So for all the experience that maybe a lot of the players lack. The coach has it. Yeah. And um, now Lamar has a playoff win, but now you got to go win back to back. Yeah. He's never done that. Never won multiple games in a postseason. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's going to be a great game. I mean, I, w- I hope it's 34 nothing Ravens and I can just breathe easy from the start, but I'm not stupid enough. The, to yeah. Barring, are... again, barring a Mahomes injury or something, unless yeah. Blaine Gabbert's in there, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. All right. Lions 49ers mm. 6:30 on Sunday. Um weirdly I think the Lions are 7 point dogs here which is a lot to me. It's, it, I don't care how good they think San Francisco is. The Lions are a good football team. I don't they understand are. how they're 7 points right now. Um I would I would take Lions plus 7 in a heartbeat if if I'm a betting man, which I am. I said before the season, I predicted it's going to be an overtime touchdown. So in that case, the Lions would still cover. Um, yeah, I I think, again, the Lions, it just has one of those feels where it's like, even if they don't win, they have come too damn far. Yeah. And they have played too damn hard. I've just, I know I'm just sound like Dan Campbell. Too <laughs> damn hard. You know, they are too gritty. This means too much to their city. Doesn't mean they're going to win. Certainly doesn't. The 49ers, absolutely on paper pound for pound are the better team mm-hmm. better team doesn't always win yeah um again i said this before they they just their defense has to find ways to generate pressure and generate some turnovers yeah. it, it just never feels like they get enough turn like they they're not like a turnover producing machine yeah i think the lions were even like, i think they had an even turnover differential for the season whereas the ravens were tied with of all teams the new york giants i think it was plus 12 or plus 11 you know, in, in turnover margin, which is always going to help you win games, the Lions were kind of even. I think they were dead even. And so my concern is, yeah. can they, and the 49ers, I assume, were towards the top. They were probably one of the top turnover teams. 49ers. Uh, let me see. Where are they? They're, I really can't find them. Oh, here they are. They were plus 10. Um, they... Had twenty eight total, which is actually with the likes of the Chicago Bears. Believe it or not, twenty eight takeaways. Yeah, I know the Bears. Well, the Bears were also like 
the second New Orleans was team New Orleans was 29. They had 29 takeovers. They were fourth in the league. The Giants had 31. Yeah, the Giants because at two didn't the Giants? I was telling my friend who's a Giants fan this. I think they they had like the mo- like they had they won they had the most the the best turnover differential, but they also gave up like by far the most sacks ever. So it's like all those turnovers were not doing much because then they were just losing yardage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Lions they they have to like we say you know the turnover battle usually wins. They really have to win that yeah. turnover battle mm-hmm. to win this game. Now Jared Goff has he knows the Niners. He's played a bunch of games against them from his time with the Rams, so he knows what to expect from this defense. I love Amon Ross St. Brown. I don't know if I've ever seen a player more aware of where he is on the field, or at least a yeah. receiver, than St. Brown. Well, I think also about the city uh, and he, how aware he is of just how much the city cares. Well, and that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, that's why his hair is blue, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I'm wearing blue, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I do think the Lions have a balanced offensive attack. I mm-hmm. do. And then the Zach Ertz signing is interesting. I mean, who knows if he's going to actually get elevated to the roster. Yeah. Um, well, they're saying that he's at least expected to. That's what they, they're that, expecting to elevate him. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it was only six years ago that he scored the winning touchdown for Philadelphia yeah. in the Super Bowl. Philly special. Um, yes, not that play, but that same yeah. Super Bowl, yeah. But he was, was he, did he no, throw that? Trey Burton. That's who it was. To Nick well, Wilson. actually, he ended up playing for the Colts, too. Trey Burton. Trey Burton. Yeah. To, or last year, actually. And, of course, Foles. Because of Frank Wright. Played for, yeah, and Foles played for the Colts. Yeah. Um, but the Debo Samuel injury, is, it's big. We've been mm-hmm. saying it a lot. I think, you know, his... His presence makes them a different dynamic of offense. But like I said, you know, the Lions have struggled a lot with these big play receivers. The Niners don't have that one big deep vertical threat. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of how they match up and how the Niners sort of use their weapons against that um, Detroit defense. But then you got to be able to stop Christian McCaffrey. It's easier yeah. said than done because that that's another guy when he gets ahead of steam. My God, he's like a like a. He's like a, a bowling ball meets a road runner or something. It's incredible. Like the guy's legs. I just love that Ed McCaffrey played for Mike Shanahan and now Christian McCaffrey plays for Kyle Shanahan. I I, re- I just think you're going to get two great championship games. Last yeah. year you you would have, but Purdy got hurt and it just turned into an, an Eagles route. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a great AFC championship game. Though. We did. We I, did. Was, I was pulling hard for Cincinnati. Oh, I think last everybody year. was. Yeah. And well, we we interviewed a Cincinnati player too. Yeah, so I was like, Gaither, right? I was like, oh my god! Like we have to have this guy make another Super Bowl. I made a shirt up with him on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm at my buddy's house. Who's a diehard Chiefs fan. Everyone around me is like screaming at me because I'm I'm the only Bengals fan. They're like, you're not even a Bengals fan. I'm like, this is good for business. Yeah. It's great for business. Yeah. I mean, the Chiefs I, like. Most of their championship games have been actually pretty good, right? Yeah. Like the one before was the one where they had the 18 point lead on Cincinnati, yeah. had the one against New England. The Tennessee game was okay, and then the Buffalo game was kind of a runaway. But yeah. the the um here's the the numbers always, you know, it's all about trends and cycles in sports. Yeah. So home teams in the championship games the last 10 years are 16 and 4. Uh we did have one year in there where both road teams won, which was 2018. It was the Rams one oh, early Rams game Patriots it, Patriots um in 2012 it happened the Ravens and the Niners funny mm-hmm. enough when they met the Super Bowl prior to that 97 I think it happened once prior to that I want to say maybe 92 so it's very rare that both road teams win yeah but we had about a nine-year stretch a 10-year stretch between 97 and no nine-year stretch in 05 I was looking this up earlier at least one road team won each of those my feeling is we may well get one road team but which road team is going to be? Are we going to be stuck with, oh, my God, we got to watch the Chiefs and the 49ers again? Or are we going to get that dream Ravens-Lions? Oh, my Super God. Bowl? Well, we may – look, we may get Chiefs-Lions, crazy, or we may get the Ravens and the Niners. There's four possible matchups. The Vegas has Ravens – obviously, Ravens-Niners is the yeah. favorite because they're, they're the two favorites. So my hunch is I, I do feel like we're going to get one road team, and I just pray it's – I pray it's not the Chiefs. I, I hope it's Detroit too. I hope it's I'm, Detroit. I'm actually looking at how they stopped the run. They really didn't. I mean, no, Detroit, Tampa the Bay. Second, oh, you're talking about, it, but in the regular season, the Detroit regular season they were great, but they didn't. Best run defense. They they were giving up 5.9 yards to carry. They were getting hurt. Except the Tampa Bay just didn't run the ball at all. Right. They ran it 15 times. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think and that. Baker had two of them for 15 yards. Like, yeah, I don't understand. I, I still don't understand Todd Bowl. 
just just looking at that, looking at Rashad White, like he's such a monster, he's and he's back, and I, yeah. But I think, I mean, Detroit can just if they do what they do normally, I, I feel like they, they can smart. They very reasonably win this game. Them where you just feel like, oh, just don't do yeah. anything too stupid here, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, just stay within yourself. Don't get don't too don't call a flea flicker in the in the fourth quarter when you're right. up like three right, in right. in San Francisco territory. Don't call the flea flicker in the driving rain, presumably. Yeah, right? I mean, good lord, it, yeah. You, I can just see something like that happening to Detroit too, and I would feel so bad. Oh uh, yeah, you just want you want if they're gonna lose, you want them to fight hard, and you don't want there to be any controversy. You don't want like when in the playoffs when they lost to Dallas a yeah. few years back with the non PI call or whatever. Well, or even the this this year's past Dallas game with with yeah, the yeah. non reporting reporting but yeah. whatever. Yeah, like you don't want or just a wide right or mm-hmm. you know a, fum- a Romo fumbled snap. You know, you just if they're gonna lose, you want it to be just a good football game. I'm gonna I'm checking on Frank Rag now right now because he got yes, rolled up on and, like three and, and times. Jonah Jackson was out for the rest of the game yesterday, so you you know again we've said this many times just tonight alone, injuries, injuries, injuries. Like just it's hard to jet to, to really be able to have that kind of depth to sustain yeah. it in, in the, at, in this level, at this level in the playoffs. Yeah. Here's something ironic. I, I, the first article I clicked on was from the Detroit free press and you have to have a subscription of course, to read the Detroit free press. Right. You, you would think, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the free press. Um, I don't know if they have any sort of Detroit news subscription, Let's check Fox. I don't know if this is going to tell me what I want. Yeah, sprained knee and sprained ankle Oof. during the game. You know, Detroit is such a tough, hard-nosed city, and it's a, you just feel like – I'm not saying that other teams like would – like. I'm not insinuating that someone on the Dolphins is less likely to play than someone on Detroit, but yeah. like you just have to – but there, there is something to be said about when a city feels so connected to its team. I mean, this is always my big problem with – the Dodgers, for example, like as if we're not going to hate them enough for what they've done, like the fans in L.A. I mean, there are, of course, there's plenty of Dodger fans, but you just don't feel like. And it's, and, it's that L.A. It, mentality. It's that West Coast. Right. Mentality. Well, that or but even Miami, you know, just that yeah. the weather, it's all transplants like when a city and people just the, the negative people will say, well, it's because there's nothing to do in Boston or it's cold. Or there's nothing to do in Detroit. So they have to care more. But it's like. It doesn't matter what the reason is. They do care. They have a connection to the city and the fans. And and Detroit is absolutely one of those cities Mm -hmm. where those fans are so passionate and they're so knowledgeable and they're so invested in it. And yes, the Niners have great history and I'm sure they have a a, a legion of fans, of course, like, but San Francisco has been here so many times. They've won five Super Bowls and the Chiefs have been to six straight AFC championship games. Obviously, the Ravens have won a couple, too. But Detroit, oh my God, you know, they're just happy to be here. Yeah. Chiefs have been there six years in a row, and the Arrowhead Invitational is taking a show on the road this year, these entitled Chiefs fans. And you have the Lions fans who are just, hey, whatever happened. They, they were happy to just here. go to the wild card. They were happy to win a, play, yeah, win yeah. a playoff game. They were happy just to get there. To win a division. Yep. I mean, have some perspective. Of course, fast forward three years when the Lions have been three straight years, and the Lions fans are like, this is our birthright. We do this every year. Hopefully that doesn't. Well, I, I'm I was afraid of that because that when, I, when I said that earlier, when I was, homes, yeah, yeah, like the I bet in like four years, if this trend continues, people are going to be like, "Oh, I'm so sick of the Lions." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, I know. Lions, we haven't seen the Lions ever this good. Well, it's like the the Yankees are a great example of it. Like their fans are so like disgusted that they only had an 82 and 80 season this year. They haven't had a losing season since '92. Like your whole perspective changes. They're they're like calling for Cashman's head. They're calling for Boone's head because they haven't won a World Series in ten years. Yeah, like fifteen. But it's counting fifteen, ten. Well, everyone is. <laughs> yeah, but I get your point. They but they've had a winning season. They've been to the five AL Championship Series. Like it's, I mean, it's amazing how wrapped up in recency bias people I get. Know. And I get it. Like there's a part of me that should say, well, do should we really hate the Chiefs because they went fifty years without winning? But like. It's. I think it's that whole just the fan mentality. Yeah. I think if the fans like weren't such a big part of sports somehow, we we would make our own opinions. We wouldn't watch, you know, like the Stephen A. Smith, I like Stephen A. Smith actually, but like the the Skip Baylesses and the, a lot of the talking heads. We'd formulate our own opinions, yeah. and you know, we would watch the game in kind of a different light. Um, but all I know is that the here and now, this is Detroit's time. Yeah. And 
I pray they could take advantage. I think, but I just think both games you're safe taking the points. Mm-hmm. I just that's just my hunch. Well, especially that's I mean, I think seven in almost any conference title game is yeah, I mean, look, last year, like you, I don't think you can't predict that. Though. You can't predict the yeah. injury exactly. And the year before, we had two three point championship games with the Bengals and the Rams winning yeah. those. And um, you know, I think the year before the Bucks, that was somewhat close. You know, it was like a five point game. So, look, sometimes you get blowouts in this round. Well, oh yeah, Tampa was that was Green Bay. Yeah, and, and they, they Tampa like through three second half interceptions, they let him back in the game or yeah. something. And um, then uh, Kansas City, no, Kansas was City that won Houston? by two touchdowns. No, they that was Buffalo. It was twenty. Oh yeah, that was Buffalo. And you know, but like some years, you you do get blowouts. Yeah. It happens, but it just I don't know if the Lions are that. Like they again, it just because this is such a unique opportunity for them. Yeah. I just I, I can't see any of these four teams getting hammered. I just can't. Like it doesn't mean they'll necessarily even be great games per se, but they will be close. Mm-hmm. And I think the outcome won't be decided until late. And that's really as a fan that's well, all at least you want. as a fan of the teams you're not invested in, right? When you want the blowout, that's all you can ask. Yeah, that's all I want. Yeah. I mean, my team isn't there. They're right. They're yeah. never there. <laughs> so your team might be the reason that my team wins because every year they beat the team that wins the Super Bowl, right? Week three, they did it last year. The Chiefs. I even when I watched it with my friend who's, who's the Chiefs fan, and I was telling him and his wife sitting there, and I was like, you know, I'm telling you, if you guys beat us this year, you're going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. If it's we're not, and he was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then I was, and throughout the game, I was like, just remember what I said. Remember what I said. And, you know, and I actually, I was telling him the Colts will win this game. I'm like, don't count us out here. We're bad, but we will win the game. <laughs> we won. And then I just kept telling him, We're, you guys are going to win the Super Bowl now. You're going to win the Super Bowl. I can just feel it. And now his wife listens to anything I say. And I've been wrong all year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have been so wrong all year. I was, but then I was almost right with like one or two games this weekend. And she was like, so what do you think about this one? I'm yeah, like, yeah. I don't know shit. We both don't ask me. So close with a couple of score. I mean, I had 28, mm-hmm. 24 Chiefs. I was off by a point. You had 21, 17 Packers, which it was till a minute left. Yeah. Um, the only one, the only game I didn't actually get the spread pick right was the Ravens. I was just nervous yeah. and kind of picking against it, you yeah. know? Uh, so well, I don't, you didn't even pick for the Ravens. Game. I did. I not- and it, you know, it was for the half, the first half. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, I took the four games of Draft America, went three and one against the spread. Uh, but I, I think this week, I, mm, I, I almost feel like both road teams are going to cover. Just don't know how that's going to play out in terms yeah. of wins and losses. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Well, it will see. It's going to be a fun game. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a fun weekend, I should say. Everybody have a good weekend. Enjoy the football games. This is the last weekend with multiple games. And then we have to take that stupid Pro Bowl. The dark week. The, the, oh, the fake Pro, Pro Bowl games, oh, okay. Pro Bowl games yeah, whatever yeah. they're doing. Um, but make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, whatever. Uh, go to Draft America. Are you doing any picks on Draft America I'm this week? I'm going to do them for the championship game. So check out Draft America for that. Um, we have a big major announcement regarding the Chaotically Intolerant Table Tennis League coming out probably next week or within a couple weeks. Uh, a lot of, yeah, a lot of big changes coming to that. So I'm really excited for that. And we will see you next week.